2000, a gift the wrestling gods bestowed on me. Came in a black cartridge and showed me what a perfect game could be. 64 bit graphics, larger than life size. Gameplay so fantastic, it made me want to cry. Friends are coming over, now I never have to go outside. Ooh. A and B together, and I still Undertaker's last ride. Guest dress ladder matches. So unfair. So you get him back by obliterating him with a steel chair. You're playing survival, trying to make it through. Half an hour later, one kicker than you're screwed. 72 wrestlers have a witch you'll probably never choose. Really? Albert, why? Cause you'd rather spend time playing with your C-A-W's. Time moves on, games come and go, they don't do much for me. Cause nothing's quite as satisfying as strong grapple down to be. I love this game, and I wanna play it more. The only thing that the Lord gave us thumbs for. Hey everybody, this is Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret and the Standing Streamer. He's put me over, so now I'm putting him over with putting you over. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Welcome everybody. I am KDUG3 and 4, your, as I grab the mic, terribly unprofessional. I am your Standing Streamer and welcome to uh, Season 2, Episode 1. That's S2E1 for those keeping score at home. Uh, of putting you over. Uh, this started a little less than a year ago, I believe. Um, when I came back from PAX, I met the, I met the guys uh from Smack Talk Showdown, and um, was like, you know what? I want to talk to those guys on the Friday night Twitch Fed show, and uh, one thing leads to another. Uh, eight episodes later, um. Here we are in season two. A big shot. Oh, big Red Sox fan. Uh, yeah, I'm a I'm a big Red Sox fan. I actually um, I had them over here on the Roku player, uh, uh, playing. They were up three to one. It was the eighth inning. Uh, but I decided to turn it off due to the fact that I didn't want to be distracted. Uh, for this really big moment. Um, and I didn't want to be distracted. And obviously the game was over because they wouldn't blow it again like they did on opening day. Anyways, the Sox and baseball talk is for another uh, time and place. But anyways, um, big shout out to Brian Zane, dear friend of the radio program. Uh, with the intro song, uh, No Mercy. He also did uh, the promo. Um, and uh, you and I are not going to get along. Oh, uh, that's fine. That's fine. We, we don't need to get along. We need to get. Oh, we need to get someone over. I don't need to get. I don't need to go over to get over. Or you don't need to get over to go over. Anyways, that's a that's another show in in itself. Um. Anyways, so uh, tonight, season two, episode one, 
Uh, we're gonna talk to a, another um, indie indie like uh, board game wrestling party card game. I guess is is how we would look at it. So I started this uh, little show with an indie card game. Uh, I'm gonna start season two with it as well. Um, and we're using Discord video tonight, which is a little different for me. Um, and it's not gonna be able to do what I thought it would do, but that's okay. That's that's all right. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll work it out. Um. Is there anything else I need to say? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Oh, I'm using. <laughs> nah, it doesn't matter. Uh. Anyways. Um. Yeah. So let's um let's bring the the the, the man, the myth, the legend in from uh book it game. And let me see. All right. I look at that. I got the overlay up, and he can unmute me if he hasn't decided to do that already. There we go. How's it going? And um, it's it's going awesome. Thank you. It's going great. Um, just checking my audio levels for, for my, my own personal reasons. Uh, I want to be, able, must. I want to be able to hear you perfectly. I don't care if the chat hears you. Um, anyways, uh, how's it going? What's going on? Uh, it's going, it's going good. Uh, it's been very, very busy for me lately. Uh, we're just a week away, less than actually like six days away from the launch of the Kickstarter for the game. So I've just been going absolutely crazy, getting stuff ready for that. And we'll be going to WrestleCon as well, uh, WrestleMania weekend. So who, I've been a very busy boy. I can imagine. Who is, when you say we, and we're talking about Book It Game, and we'll get to, to what that game is, what it's about, all it entails. But you use, you use the words we. Who's we? What is we? What is so? So I, I guess primarily we is just a, a carny way of making you seem like you're more important Figured. than you are because you have multiple people with you. Like um, when I but, say friends of the radio program, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I do have some uh, some friends who have helped me along the way in making this. Um, I have a couple people that I'm going to be bringing with me. Uh, one being my wife, another being a friend of mine who kind of helped me um, get the game kind of pre-produced uh, a little bit and he's going to be helping me out at the con. So um, it's really been, I mean, I guess I am, you know, the the main designer of the game, but there have been a lot of people who have helped me along the way, whether it's play testing, um, doing the art for the game or uh, play uh, or designing the, uh, like the templates for it and whatnot. So there have been a lot of people who have been in involved with it as far as like the social media and stuff. I pretty much handle that all on my own. Um, but uh, I, I like to think it's it's a team effort, so that's why I I always tend to say we instead of I. It, it also it does, and it does. It makes you sound uh, bigger. I use it all the time. We we yes. we put this show on tonight. We the the friends of the stream it, when it was me running around <laughs> using yeah, two exactly. Twitter handles. Makes you makes you seem like some sort of big corporation or whatever, <laughs> right? right? Let me get you in touch with my PR department. Yeah, hold yeah. on. Let me contact hold. my. <laughs> exactly. Oh goodness gracious! I tell you. <laughs> Uh, caught from the same cloth, but um, yeah. go ahead. You were gonna say something? I uh, just you gotta hustle. <laughs> you gotta hustle. You gotta work, right? You gotta yeah. work. Um, so before we we get to the game, uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna talk a little bit, a little bit about about wrestling because that I mean that's how I stumbled across you. I I, I stumbled across you on Twitter. I, I don't know through who, whether it was um, I'm a follow multiple multiple uh wrestling people and whatnot but um you're obviously a wrestling fan oh yeah right uh, i would I'm say a wrestling fan and um i actually have some ties to the independent wrestling scene mm. i work for a company called truly independent wrestling uh, based out of western massachusetts wow. um they're about an hour or so outside of albany uh, I, uh, I do, uh, the, I do some booking for them, uh, hence the game, I guess. And, um, I do, I used to do color commentary and I'm also their, um, kayfabe general manager, uh, as well. So, um, yes, wrestling fan. And, uh, the past couple of years I've been fortunate enough to kind of be involved more in the inner workings. And I, um, like, t like 10 or so years ago, I kind of started off, I was doing like ring crew and security work for a company in Montreal called IWS, which is where uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn came from. So I got to see them really early on in their careers. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been involved with it for a while. And um, some of those things that happened in my time in those different spaces kind of inspired the game for sure. I'll tell you what, that is, 
That is an. I was not expecting that answer. One one <laughs> of the things I like to do for these interviews is not do any research or prep at all. I I thought about <laughs> I thought about prepping, but no. I wrote down like three notes. I wrote down three uh, a couple notes before the show, and then because I I like to be uh I like the initial reaction. Um, from those answers and that that is amazing i did not uh, know or realize that i can hear the announcer's voice in you which is <laughs> yes am- yeah I, am- I can hear it i can hear the color uh i think it's more of a play-by-play uh voice and color yeah i do i did like doing play-by-play better my style definitely suits it more but uh when we started up tiw uh, it was just, it, you know, like a gen- like a character should generally be like a color guy, yeah. and then the play by play guy. Our play by play guy is also our ring announcer, Dan Peruzzi. So he kind of like we felt he was a little bit better suited for that. And then I did the character stuff. But now um, at the end of last year, I uh, I got attacked uh, <laughs> by one of the wrestlers and took a couple months off. So um, somebody else filled in for color and he did a really good job. Uh, so I'm just going to let him do it. <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to be the, uh, the general manager and, and whatnot and do the stuff behind the scenes. So 40 minutes out of Albany, you say, huh? Uh, yeah, it's about an hour. It's um, Lanesboro, Massachusetts. Yeah. So a lot of the people who uh, started it up are from Albany, but it is really, really expensive to do an independent wrestling promotion in New York state. Like the licensing fees yeah. are way higher. You have to have like a paramedic there at all times. Um, the barrier for entry is really, really high. So they decided like, we're not going to bother. We're just going to, you know, kind of go a little bit outside. And uh, we've been getting, uh, you know, good really turnouts. good crowds. We had the most uh, most ever at our last show uh, was like 270 tickets. It's actually kind of like the cap. We can't really let in any more people than like, that amount so um it's getting better and better and it's uh it's, it's a lot of fun for sure oh man you're living my dream i want yeah. to i want to be a i want to be a heel manager come out and check it out it's not that far from you i know it's not that's what i'm thinking april 21st is our next show you there we go out. we're putting this oh yeah we're putting me over we're putting that right. what, what promotion is that again uh truly independent wrestling uh, you can check them out at truly independent wrestling.com or on Facebook or anything like that. Truly independent wrestling.com. So you guys yep. will all check that. Kit, I'm like, oh, Kit, I'm going to pull that up right here. Um, <laughs> so that's awesome. So, so yeah, so you have a, a, a massive in depth wrestling background. Um, what, what, what about, what about the gaming background of things? How, how did those two bleed over? Uh, you, you, uh, how do I want to say this? How did you come up with the idea? I guess it's a lame question to start with, but go ahead. No, no, that's that's definitely one I get asked a lot. Um, I'm I'm a huge uh, gaming fan. As a matter of fact, uh, if you take a look, I have a shelf behind me. That's all board games. That's I can. Um, so I I um I've been in I've like loved gaming since I was a kid. Uh, my first job with ever I ever worked when I was 16 years old was at a gaming store, like a board game store. Um, so I've been really into it and I've played a lot of different games and, um, and have just been very interested in it for a really long time. And I, you know, I don't know what exactly inspired me to do it. I was unemployed at the time, so maybe that had something to do with it. Um, but one day I just sat down and I was like, uh, I, you know, I, I thought that something like this, you know, hadn't really been done before. Cause I'm, you know, talking about professional like wrestling games and even like video games. Right. I'm a fan of like the, the wrestling Sims, like, um, Total Extreme Warfare, Fire Pro Wrestling, yep. um, you know, like the GM modes in like, you know, the old SmackDown versus Raws and stuff like that. That was the best it, GM mode ever. Yeah. O six and O six was, the, yeah. was yep. one of my favorite because I was living in Albany at the time and I got that and I played it, I played the crap out of that. So I I just kind of was like, you know, no one's ever done it from that angle before. Like I've played other wrestling card games, like Raw Deal was a really popular one back in like the mid 2000s because that was a WWE licensed game. Mm. Uh, and then there's been some others, but every game I've played, with the exception actually of, of Smack Talk Showdown, which you guys had on, most of the ones I played have been from the spe- perspective of you're a wrestler, you're going against another wrestler, you're trying to win a wrestling match. Yeah. And, you know, that's interesting, but to me, being somebody who has been a fan of wrestling and and a diehard wrestling fan and kind of knows the inside, I've always thought to myself, like the real competition is between the promotions because a wrestling match itself is, is cooperative. Like these guys are working together to make something. 
And that's not how that's kind of been portrayed. It's you know, like all the other games have been kind of like kayfabe, I guess you would say. Yeah. So I wanted to do something from a different perspective where you could have more than two players. This game goes up to four players you can you can play with. So you can play with kind of a group of people. Most of the wrestling games are just two players because it's a wrestler versus a wrestler. And um, it's it's something that, again, like it's definitely something for the, the the diehard kind of wrestling nerds i definitely worked hard to make sure that it was a good game in general and people who have never played who have never really watched wrestling before have been really into it and just enjoyed it as a game but i wanted to include a lot of inside jokes and, and the characters are all kind of takes on people in real life and i wanted to have that people to have kind of fun with that and uh and i was really kind of happy with the way it came out i started working on it uh in june of 2016 Wow. And um, and it was just, you know, literally like just write, writing on scraps of paper. And then I got hooked up with a really good artist who's done merchandise design for like the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and um, Adam Cole and the Briscoes and just like a ton of people. And I got her to do the artwork for it. And and it's uh, it's in kind of more or less its final form now. And it's uh, it's just amazing to see what it started with and where it is to, at this point. It's very interesting that it's four players. That was one of the uh, main uh, selling points for me. Um, is the four pl the multiple player aspect? It's like um, how was I? I was explaining this uh, to my wife. It's like uh, the ter like the old school territories. Um, yeah, you are competing and uh, for different promotions is is basically uh, how I looked at it. Yeah, and that's that's what I, I wanted. I wanted that kind of the, the the you know kind of four people around the table. You can play it by yourself too. You can actually just play for like a high score basically for reputation. So I wanted to try and have it be for a wide group so you could get it on the table with a lot of different types of people. But um, you know, I started I started playing with my friends, and you know, it's a thing where it's not only it is is it a competitive game. It's a very competitive game, but I also kind of designed it with the idea that kind of similar to like you know the old school territories, like okay, this guy is getting really ahead in the game. We need to stop him. <laughs> so it almost kind of like causes people to kind of work together briefly to uh, undercut somebody that is doing really well uh but uh, they're almost doing it at a risk to hurting their own promotion so it's trying to find the balance of that uh i i, I really wanted to kind of have that that element of their in there of there can be cooperation but that's up to the players to decide how much they want and there can be you can be you can take actions to kind of screw your opponents over but again that's up to you to decide if you want to be that kind of promoter or if you just want to be somebody who's like listen i'm just going to ignore everyone else I'm going to just put on the best shows I can. I'll see if that wins. Or if you're going to be somebody who's like, I'm going to mess with everybody and try and, and try and take them all down and then, and then run ahead in the race. What is the best tactic to take as a promoter? You know, it's, it's so funny because as I've watched this game kind of evolve and grow, um, I've had friends who have literally played it hundreds of times. And uh, to the point where my friends, specifically one of my friend, John, uh, I was sick of playing the game, and every time he came over, he would suggest playing it. Um, he's gotten really, really good at the game, and there's been a number of different strategies that have developed. Um, but in, in terms of Book It, what makes a good promoter is um, working on your local talent early, develop your local talent, uh, and then towards the end of the game, just try and make a lot of money, put on solid, but you don't have to put on amazing shows, but just have a lot in your bankroll at the end. Because that was one thing I wanted to include in the game is that, you know, the idea is that you want to have the highest reputation at the end of the game. Uh, the better shows you put on, the more your reputation goes up because your wrestling shows are really good. But also at the end of the game, uh, everybody totals up their money and then how much money they have adds to their reputation too. Because when everybody discusses what's the rest, rest, best wrestling promotion in the world, there's always somebody who's like, well, this one's making the most money, right. so it's them by default. So I wanted that in there. So there's a lot of different ways you can play it. You can you can play it straight for reputation. You can hoard a lot of money. You can mix it up. And honestly, like I haven't found any one strategy that just blows the rest out because the game kind of changes up and is so different every time you play it. Yeah, the replay factor, I would imagine, is high on the game. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a cliche to say 
play the same game twice, mm -hmm. but because of the mechanics and the way that people choose their promotions, because everybody picks what type of promotion they're going to be at the same time. So there's the different styles of wrestling are the options you have for your promotion. So like sports entertainment and hardcore and strong style and Lucha Libre and hybrid, and everybody has those choices, but then everybody picks them at the same time. So you don't know what your competition is doing when you start your promotion so everybody turns their promotions over and maybe there's like two or three guys who are all going sports entertainment so now they have to kind of compete for resources and deal with each other and maybe the one guy who picked lucha libre can just kind of just hoard all the lucha guys and he doesn't have to worry about getting his competition poached so uh so it's it's very very different and every time you play it it'll be under different circumstances and in different scenarios um, you said something earlier when you were, um, talking about, yeah, you, be you better fix that. Oops. <laughs> Oops. I, I talk with my hands a lot. So I got excited. I do like too. It. I do too. And, uh, I used to, <laughs> used to have the same, uh, pop filter and I decided to get rid of, it. I used to have the mic up here when I was in the yeah. garage and I would pull it down. I got a, a blue mic, a uh, snowball and I used to pull it down and have the pop filter and this has nothing to do with the game, but and uh and it it just it just worked and then when i moved here i had to put i just it didn't work i had to put it down in the ground i'm like you know what? forget the pop filter i just won't use peas and and but i do talk <laughs> with my hands i do have a uh a yeti blackout on the bar the bar is mic'd uh for some nights and <laughs> that's uh, funny I should, I, I should, yeah, just in case. I should switch the mics, but I really like my, I really like my snowball. You but, gotta go um, with what works for you. Yeah, right. What, that and I'm really lazy to change. <laughs> um, but you said something when I, I said, uh, you know, how did you come up with the idea? Blah blah blah. And you said something, um, that not kind of uh, towards the aspect of you don't have to be a wrestling fan to enjoy the game um you you are going to wrestle con which you you're gonna hit a ton of wrestling fans yes. um but f like this coming weekend i'll be at pax there'll be a ton of indie there'll be a board game whole board game section um uh night honey um sorry was, i told my daughter to say good night when she went to bed um there'll be a whole board game section obviously tabletop games um how would you pitch a game such as book it to a non wrestling fan, a, a board game fan, tabletop sure. fan, but how would you pitch it to them? Because, so oh, if, go ahead. Oh, sorry. So, if I was pitching this to a non wrestling fan, uh, I would just talk about the mechanics of the game. So Book It is um, it's a deck building type of game where you're, you're, buying cards you're adding them to your deck but unlike other deck building games um a lot of board gamers are probably familiar with games like dominion um legendary things like that um these uh these decks that you're building kind of are co in constant flux because when you're adding things to your deck for the most part they're only there for one turn so you have to kind of figure out the best spot to sign wrestlers that are going to give you the most victory points which is what reputations are what reputation points are uh, that are going to fit in best with the style that you're doing. And then you're going to also have to be competing with resources with your opponents. So it's kind of like a resource management game mixed with a deck building game. Uh, and it's also got, like I said, that kind of um, that kind of social element involved with it as well, where you're trying to um, potentially undercut the leader, kind of similar to uh, Cosmic Encounter um, is a game where that's like that, where it's not necessarily super focused on all the cards being balanced and everything being um, exactly in harmony with each other, but the players kind of have to balance it themselves by uh, ganging up on the people who are doing better earlier on and whatnot. So there's there's a lot of different elements that have inspired me from other games I played, and a, a lot of them had nothing to do with pro wrestling. Games like um, Android Netrunner, uh, the DC deck building games, the Cryptozoic deck building games, that kind of style of everybody's buying from the same marketplace, and then just deck building games in general. So it's it's a game that has a, a lot of strategy to it, a, a surprisingly amount, a, a surprisingly deep amount of strategy to it it's easy to learn the manual is going to be like like maybe 10 pages or so and uh it's very difficult to master and it's something that somebody who is uh a fan of strategy games uh and that kind of like four player style 
are going to, uh, I think they're going to get a lot out of, even if you've never touched or if you've never seen pro wrestling before uh, you can, I could, I could take this game and I could reskin it as like gladiators <laughs> in a gladiatorial arena there you go. or like boxers or, or whatnot. And it still would work. And that's kind of what I've, I've talked about with friends. So it's, it, the flavor is great. And I, and I did a lot to make sure that it had a lot of flavor in there for pro wrestling fans, but it's, it's just a solid game. I worked really hard on making a solid game. I've designed, whether it was tabletop RPGs or other personal projects, I've, I've done a lot of design on things in the past. I focused very hard on making something that was fun and engaging, even if it, even if the flavor didn't interest you. Well, what attracted me to the game, obviously, was the wrestling aspect. I, I know nothing of those other card <laughs> building games. <laughs> uh, I, can play, I, could, I could play poker with you. Or sure, <laughs> and I, I was I was a, I was a professional poker player for a couple of years too. There you go. So, um, that's what so like that's just kind of the the mindset I have. I'm a game oriented person, so I put a lot of this game has been tested and tweaked and whatnot for two years. Like we really yeah. put a lot of effort into testing this and uh, making sure that it was a refined game, that it was fun. It's it's a game where there's the potential if the person who is the best at it is going to win more times than not. It's, it's kind of similar to poker in that way where maybe the cards are going to not go your way in the short term, but if you're good at this game it's and you're experienced with it, you're going to win it. Like my friend, John uh, wins just almost every time. And, and the, despite the fact that I made the game, I have like a, like a 25% win rate at best at it just because uh, the other people I've shown it to have, have really kind of absorbed it. And developed their own strategies and gotten really just good at the game. That's uh, this John. I've heard of him twice now already. We got to cut. We got to undercut him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. If you're playing with John, <laughs> if you're uh, playing with John, undercut John, him. destroy John. <laughs> Hashtag let's beat up John. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we, we joke, we joke around because you know, we're, at WrestleCon this year and WrestleMania next year is in New York City. So we're probably going to be at WrestleCon there too. So if the game gets funded, the very, very loose long-term planning is that uh, the WrestleCon 2019 will be the first Book It World Championships. Ah, uh, and uh, I better start practicing. Yes, and John <laughs> is very interested in going there. As well, so <laughs> we're going to get a book it, a little Book It title. We'll book it uh, if, if we if we end up doing it, I will almost certainly make a, a, you have to. Or a full title belt for it. You you should. So, yeah, I, I will I, almost a, beyond question. Can turn it into an entire esports. <laughs> yeah. I, except it wouldn't be e because it would be. No, it'd just be like a little you know, card game, <laughs> little card game, competitive uh, card game scene. Yeah. Card sports. Um. I thought of a question when you were, we were telling that story and you see, this is why it's a laid back show because I think, I think I try to be professional and have a template and I think of things and then something pops into my head and it just derails me. <laughs> um, uh, and we'll get to the Kickstarter. That's, that's what it was. You said okay. Kickstarter and I know you guys want to start that and you want to unveil it um, at WrestleCon and, uh, and we will get to talking about that, but I, I wanted to bring something up on your Twitter. This is totally off topic on your Twitter, which is at book it game. Okay. So I was trying to find graphics for this little overlay thing. And, uh, I, I was going to have one for WrestleCon. And I was going to have it like, uh, fade in and out like, Oh, they're appearing at WrestleCon, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking at the back of the, the Twitter and it says WrestleCon April 5th to the 8th of 2017. Oh should, yeah, should, should I didn't have, even notice that. That's should, funny. That, that should be eighteen. Yeah, um, I probably should have been the old logo they had on their website. I'll I have, probably should have sent that to you off air, but I <laughs> no, that's okay. I'll, thank you. I um, just, how did I not notice that? That's really funny. And I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna actually edit it for you and send it back to you, but a. I got busy. Anyways, I'll just, I'll just write the eight over the seven. <laughs> just, we'll yeah, playing. like the well, yeah, just like put a spray paint an eight over it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the funny thing is too, because the date, the days are like right, like it is like the fifth through the eighth. And is that where was it in New Orleans too? Yeah, and it's at New Orleans. So this is from WrestleCon's website. <laughs> like, well, this is officially from theirs. Uh. We all know they're watching WrestleCon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fix your graphics, please. 
<laughs> um, oh, that's funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, so so I stumbled across you on Twitter. Speaking of Twitter, mm. uh, wrestling and um, a gaming aspect, which um, I like to to. That's another uh, selling point when I I want to interview people. I want to I want to bridge the gap of wrestling, gaming, board games, video games, all that type of jazz. Um, all that stuff in the social media aspect, and that's what led me to you. And um, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. I was, <laughs> I was talking about. I was thinking in my head. Uh, Ed Ed keeps distracting me in the chat with his uh, amazing comments. Ed's a very distracting person. It's it's okay. It's, <laughs> it's I'm easily distracted, and and uh, so is Ed. And I don't know. Oh oh yeah yeah I remember. So um. I, I'm looking into you, and, and I start up a conversation. We're talking back and forth, very, very uh, easy going and whatnot. And this is why notes are important. Yeah, my notes are sitting right back here on my table with my um, with my pack of uh, SmackDown Chromium Edition cards that I haven't that's opened yet. Good place for the notes. Yes, that's a good place for the notes. Um, <laughs> what you're on? You're on Steam. You're on tabletop. Uh, simulator. Yes. Correct. Now, yes. my question is this, and this is probably something I should know, but I don't know. Um, why go the why go the mod simulator route first, and then like a like a Kickstarter campaign, which we'll get to. Like mm. that. That's I guess that's something I don't know. Sure. Because so you know my. My idea with putting it on Tabletop Simulator was just simply, this is the easiest way to show as many people as possible about this game. Um, and it's it was a thing of like, you know, you could be concerned that, okay, maybe, maybe somebody out there is going to not back a Kickstarter because of this. But I think that I've just had so many people who have come to me uh, Ed's one of them who's in the chat right now. Uh, I've had so many people come to me. The game actually on Tabletop Simulator, uh, we've done over 1,100 downloads of it. Uh, it was at one time on like the front page of like their featured mm -hmm. games section. Like if you fire up the game, you'll get like five things that'll like link you to different uh, mods and Book It was one of them for like a week. Uh, so I've gotten so much attention on the game that, and that's what was really the goal is to, is to get as many people to look at this game, to kind of play around with it, that those people would be interested in picking up the actual paper, you know, version when it came out because tabletop simulator, like it's good, but if somebody, you know, tries out book it by themselves, but they want to play it with like four of their friends, but not all of their friends are going to have tabletop simulator, right. or it's kind of a pain in the butt to use in terms of the interface, if you're not really used to it. So I just wanted people to use it as a like, Hey, check this game out. If you're really interested in it, there's, it's going to come out in a Kickstarter. I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people on it. Uh, it's got really positive reviews and I think it's done a lot to really uh, generate interest for the game. So I'm really happy with the decision to, to do that. Yeah. It was just, it was interesting to me because um, when I had talked to the SmackDown guys and I had promoted them a lot, not only did I interview them, but I, I, I think I did one whole stream one night trying to raise money for their Kickstarter because they were so close and, and, nice. and this, all this jazz. And then I thought to myself, why can't I take these cards and put them into some sort of program just like they have Cards Against Humanity and all that? Right. I didn't even know about Tabletop Simulator. I thought you could just play like Parcheesi on it. I didn't understand. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can do a lot with <laughs> So when when I talk to you and I see you're on there, I'm like, wait wait a second, why go one round? It, it's interesting. Two wrestling card games. I've talked to both of them, different routes, both doing Kickstarter. One has achieved it. You're starting it. Why don't you talk about that? Uh, yeah. So the Kickstarter uh, it starts on April sixth. Uh, so it's the 2018, Friday. right? Yes, this year? 2018, okay. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> it, it starts uh, the Friday before WrestleMania. Uh, we're going to be in New Orleans to promote it, and uh, we are going to be looking to raise enough money to uh, print 
and enough money for shipping and, and the cost of the art and whatever for a thousand copies of the game. Uh, because, uh, you know, I've already kind of done my due diligence. I've done my homework. I've talked to manufacturers already. A thousand is kind of like the lowest you can do for like a mass distributor sort of style uh, to help kind of keep the cost of the game down to make the cost per copy of the game like lower. Right. Um, the prototypes I did for the game were very, um, were like done with like a print on demand service where the cost of it is really high like per copy so we wanted to do the kickstarter as a way to make as many as we could get it into as many people's hands as we could and um i had actually done a kickstarter before uh, on a much smaller scale um i used to kind of uh write and self-publish uh, comic books so i did a couple kickstarters for those wrestling and comics so no, th these are uh, just regular. Different, um, yeah, like the just like ten or so years ago, just different nice. things that I had done. Um, like I said, I'm always kind of having my hands in different projects yeah, and yeah. different things. So I was kind of familiar with the Kickstarter model already, um, and it, I just figured that this was the best way to kind of communicate it out to people. People are familiar with Kickstarter; they use it a lot, so it's a trusted service. Uh, so I thought that it was just kind of the best route to go, and. And it's it's nice too that if we don't get the funding for it, then we can you know we we're not out really any money. We can try again at some other point. Um, however, like I'm really just hoping it gets funded. And uh, like I said, everybody I've talked to, it's it's almost uh, like I feel like I'm being like somebody is like like tricking me or something because every single person I've ever talked to has been very positive about the game, uh, and it's like somebody's lying to me like this this isn't that this couldn't be that good of a game <laughs> could it uh, to get like kind of just universal praise from people um so uh, so i'm hoping that based on the feedback i've gotten from people like literally like again like i said people who've never played or who've never watched professional wrestling to professional wrestlers um who have played the game uh everybody kind of from the whole spectrum has been very positive about it. So I decided like, all right, let's, let's do it. Let's try and put it into people's hands. And, uh, and that's what we're doing. We're going to have a lot of different reward levels that are going to be a lot of fun uh, that hopefully people will be interested in. And somebody can at every level of what you're looking to invest, there should be a, an option for you there. So I'm really, uh, I'm really excited about it. We've done a lot of work on just the campaign itself. I got the, the Kickstarter video back yesterday. That's done. It looks great. We had a, a professional video producer and editor do it. This is awesome! And, um, just this is awesome! And, uh, we're really taking it seriously and we're ready to go. And, and we're, we're, not, we're not just trying to just, just squeak by the goal. We want to we wanna smash it. We want to get this thing all over the world. Uh, I like the we use again. Good job. Yes, we, exactly. <laughs> Good job out of you. Like there's more people. Yes, exactly. Um... The kick, okay, so the Kickstarter. So uh, we're going to go off the game a little bit uh, just on the Kickstarter because you, you do have a little background uh, in that and have been talking about that because you're announcing it. Um, what What is – oh, well, you, you're going to announce it on April 7th. Um, six. six, sorry. It's okay. Um, what, what is the goal? So the goal is going to be uh, $18,000. $18,000. Uh, yeah, and, and again, that's going to be the cost of sh um, yeah. you know, considering shipping. Uh, we're, we, we, again, talking about wanting to get this globally, we have worked the goal and everything in mind where we wanted to try and get it, you know, let everybody get it. Because a lot of times with Kickstarter, especially for like board games and stuff, if you live in like Australia or like the UK or wherever, like the shipping is going to be like crazy high, like $30 for shipping or whatever, when the game itself could just be like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, so we worked really hard to make sure that no matter where you are in the world, whether it's US, Australia, UK, uh, you're going to be paying $10 shipping across the board. Um, we tried to make it really reasonable, especially because uh, the artist for the game, Alex Mahoney, is from Australia. She's Australian. So uh, we knew we were going to get a lot of interest out there. So we wanted to make sure that when we kind of built the model for the goal and whatnot and for the shipping, that we wanted to keep everybody kind of globally in mind. So there's some consideration for shipping in there. And then it's, again, for the cost of printing the thousand copies of the game, covering the cost of the art that we've already paid for. Um, 
so that's what we're we're trying to hit for eighteen thousand dollars the game itself uh just talking a little bit about the levels if you just want to buy the basic version of the game the pledge for that is going to be $34. And then we're going to have a couple uh, kind of more special versions a little bit higher up. So at $39, you'll get like the Kickstarter exclusive version of the game, which will have uh, eight more wrestlers. It'll have a couple more. Um, it'll have alternate art for a couple of the uh, dirt sheet and special announcement cards. Uh, at the $44 level, you will get what's called the ultra violent version in which we are going to um, when we designed the game, I guess this requires a little backstory. When we designed the game, uh, I wanted to do it to make sure it was like no more than like a PG-13, like a fairly accessible game in terms of the artwork. But I felt like for the hardcore style of wrestlers, that didn't really fit them very well right. um, because I couldn't kind of be true to them. Or right, nobody wants the Miz. Them. Right, so <laughs> the ultra-violent version of the game to feature... Uh, what I consider the hardcore wrestlers in kind of their more uh, natural form. They're going to, you know, I'm not going to, shackles are going to be off in terms of the blood and the violence that's going to be depicted in the arts for those characters. Um, so that's kind of really going to be like the full version of the game. Uh, if you want like kind of everything in there. Um, and then kind of going up from that, uh, if you, at the $150 level, uh, you can get a, a wrestler made out of yourself. Uh, our artist Alex Mahoney will make art for you specifically, and then we will design a card around that, and then you will be able to have that in your version of the game. And how much was uh, that again? One hundred fifty dollars. Because we need uh, a we need a standing streamer card. Yes, you can absolutely do that. And um, independent wrestlers out there who are interested in that level, uh, we'll also send you like a high quality scan of the art, and it's yours to keep. Like it's it's yours if you want to like put it on Poster. your merch or whatever. Yeah. Um, so you can do whatever you want with it. It's, it's now just a piece of art that was designed by Alex Mahoney, who has done, you know, merch design for a ton of people. So we wanted to do that. Um, the level above that, uh, for $300, uh, we're calling it the then now forever level, which is you'll get book it, uh, at the, you know, the kind of full version of the game and then everything we ever produce forever. <laughs> so yeah. like if we do expansions, if we do other copies of the, you know, other different board games or card games you'll get those um that's limited to like five people um just in case uh, <laughs> and then uh the 500 dollars level uh we will actually uh you'll have to provide transportation but what we'll do is you will get to go behind the scenes of an independent wrestling show so if we're truly independent wrestling you're going to be able to come out to massachusetts uh sit in on a training class with the um wrestling students uh, you can participate if you want to. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, you will sit in on the writing meeting to show how we write the shows. You'll be backstage while we run the shows. You know, you'll be in the locker room for everything. So we wanted to do that as a way to um, give people an opportunity to go behind the scenes at an independent wrestling show and see how it actually works. And then uh, the final level, which is uh, if you're willing to pledge $1,500, uh, I will uh drive to your house hand deliver your copy of the game and then you can put me through a table <laughs> hold on i got at bully ray <laughs> dear dear bully this guy's asking to be put through a table i am not asking i am offering if you're willing to pay fifteen hundred dollars i can hear bully well i'll do it i'll do it for free brother <laughs> i'm sure he would Oh, that's great. I wish <laughs> I wish what what move can I use to put you to the table? Anything? So that will I guess we'll kind of discuss that. How big are you? I'm not that uh, big. I'm, I'm like six one and oh, like 230 God. pounds. So. Oh, I'm frog splashing. <laughs> <laughs> so we can we can work out like a, a or something like that. I don't we'll have fifteen hundred, but <laughs> we'll kind of uh we'll kind of judge um, we'll kind of judge on what will be the best approach when we oh get Oh my there. God. Uh, I uh, wish I did. Cause that's worth the money alone. It's all right. Uh, go, going back to, uh, going back to the inf spending oh. $3,000 so he can do it twice. <laughs> yeah. uh, Dear bully. This guy now wants two table shots. <laughs> oh, there's, uh, there's, there's only uh, two people who will, will be able to do that, but uh yeah yeah devon and in in, in, in <laughs> well it would save me on travel i guess 
do it at the same place. Well, hey, do it at their Connecticut school. There's a wrestling. There there's go. a Dudley wrestling school in Connecticut. That's well, right. Giant. I have family in Connecticut too. It'll be easy. Uh, we, yeah, we want tables. I don't have that sound drop. I got, I should get that sound drop. Though. It's it's funny because you know, kind of speaking of, like I said, I had family in Connecticut. Pro wrestling is my family. I have family that lives in Stamford, Connecticut. So like right where WWE's headquarters is, Titan Tower. Uh, so whenever I would go out there and visit them, they would always tell stories of kind of like, you know, like Hulk Hogan, like hanging around in Stamford after like a workout or whatever. One of my relatives has like an old uh, WWF poster in their attic from like the, um, from like the seventies, like an old, wow. like high school yeah. gym like you know wrestling poster like one of the old school ones that was like it was like um jesse ventura and like ken patera versus mr fuji and mr saito and like it, it, it's just like so i i kind of just kind of grew up around that i was born two days before the first wrestlemania i was born march 29th 1985 so all of these things just kind of connected me to professional wrestling it was almost just like i was destined to be a fan of it and kind of get involved in it uh what did you just say? you just said something that made me want to oh quick quick question uh mm -hmm. hulk hogan you want to see him back oh uh, no <laughs> um i have very very little nostalgia for uh professional wrestlers in general i always have this kind of standing rule that uh although i have to like make more and more exceptions for it as guys like aj styles and stuff start to get older uh, i'm not interested in seeing anybody over 45 wrestle that isn't chris jericho I am not interested in seeing True. anybody oh, like I'm, I'm, I'm interested in seeing very, very few people over the age of 40 wrestle. Um, I, I, I feel like professional wrestling, like I appreciate the older style and I love watching um, older guys, you know, guys who, who wrestled in the eighties wrestling in their prime. Like I love watching stuff from like right. the eighties and the seventies and the early nineties. Um, I'm not all that interested in seeing them wrestle. Now we have so many, good wrestlers whether it's wwe or on the indies or ring of honor or new japan uh that are here today i i don't want to see other like i don't want to see the rock wrestle over any of them no, you know i don't want to see either. triple h wrestle over any of them and as far as hulk hogan goes i mean he's done a lot of kind of dirty things in the business and i just feel like anytime his he's at a place the attention's on him and it's not on, you know, it's not being directed towards the people it should be. So Hogan staying away, like, I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, it's, uh, he's, he's, I mean, he's almost 70. It's, right, exactly. He like, he's not going to wrestle. He can't yeah, get in the ring. Like, you know, like Ric Flair, too, same way. Like, I, I would love, like, I love to see them, like, on shows, like, Table for Three or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yep. Talking about the old yep. days, telling stories. That's awesome. I don't need to see them on like regular TV when I'm looking to see the new, the new generation, the new crop of talent, you know, guys like Seth and Sammy and Kevin and, and Finn and whatnot. Like I'm, I'm, I'm watching for those guys. Now the other guys had their time. It was good back then. It was, uh, I enjoyed it. That's what I grew up on, but I have no desire to see it now. You don't want to see Brutus to Barber beefcake return. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. In, in, uh, it's it's uh, encouraging that it's actually very encouraging that we haven't seen Flair um, as much as we could uh, with the push for with Char I mean they could have shoved Rick down our throat with Charlotte yeah. and, and they, they had a little bit in the beginning like yes the beginning and and Rick was managing her I had a issues with that that early run just because it felt like Rick was kind of doing everything for her yeah. and her her wins and losses were completely independent of her own work and they were all kind of dependent on on rick flair being there uh i i'm happy that they kind of went away from that and let charlotte develop into her own person because she's doing a really good job at it she's come a long way in kind of the short amount of time she's been involved in the business and yeah like i i don't know if that's rick's decision or their decision or a little a a little b but the fact that they did kind of ease up on that uh, I think was definitely better for Charlotte. And I think it was just better for the fans in general. And I think, you know, seeing it's nice to see the, the singles matches that are going to happen with the women at WrestleMania. And it's just really focused on them now and um, women's wrestling in general. I have always been a really huge fan of um, I, I'm a fan of like the old uh, all Japan women's yep. wrestlers from the nineties. You uh, see like that Minami. in your cards. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, like, I, Manami Toyota, is, I, I really genuinely believe the greatest wrestler to have ever lived, male, female, does not matter. Um, her stuff is incredible. Just that whole All Japan Women's roster, I don't know if there were, like, aliens that crash landed on this planet and decided to take up pro wrestling because they're they're three decades ahead of what anybody else is you know was still was doing at the time and the people are just barely starting to catch up today um and uh if if you let them work and and show and you know let people sh- you know show them what they can do and we've seen it with like sasha and bailey at takeover brooklyn we've yep. seen that you can put on not just the best women's match of a modern area, but the, the match the of the night. Match. I mean, yeah, Sasha and Bailey outshined Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor in a ladder match. It beat that match out. I mean, everybody remembers Sasha and Bailey. Nobody remembers that ladder match that main evented after it. So that just tells you how good women's wrestling can be when you give it the attention and the respect it deserves. And we're just now starting to get to the point where I really do feel like they can uh work on an equal footing with the men because uh that period in the 90s where it was just kind of tna and whatnot um we've had enough time removed from that where the the women have developed in terms of their ability and the the promoters and the audience have developed to the point where they're kind of accepting that uh i have three daughters and i've talked to izzy on this show before women's wrestling is is uh eons beyond what it what like you said the tna aspect uh yes from from the past um couple questions on the women's that popped in my head one um will we ever see um an all women's show uh on the network i guess is what i'm saying not you know just wwe style not Others. Right. So I really wish that they, I, I would love took that whole women's division and just put it at like full sale, like they do for NXT yeah, and they should. even like an hour show every week. Yeah. That's, I really would love to do that. I know that why they don't because they're, they're marketable and because of the merch and whatnot. And yeah. honestly, like the women probably wouldn't want to either because again, that's, that's almost kind of seen as a step back. Cause right. you're performing Sasha and Charlotte are not going to want to go to full sale. Right. They've already been there. They've done that. Um, but from an artistic perspective or from a creative perspective, giving them that that kind of time that's that's just dedicated to them and isn't just like, hey, you have a half hour out of a three hour show on Raw. Right. Um, I would like to see that. Uh, I don't know if they'll ever do it just because, uh, again, like they, they use the women to kind of feed their main roster and to feed NXT too. I mean, the NXT women's division is always super solid. Um, I don't know if they would ever get to the point where they had like enough talents in developmental to do kind of their own their women's own. version of NXT. I think that that's the only way I could see that happening. I don't think it would be like the main, like the, like the top, top wrestlers in WWE. Right. I think it would be something like where all of the kind of developmental level, or at least the new people coming in, um, they would get kind of their own hour uh, in a, a very similar NXT style. I would love to see it because, like I said, I think it deserves uh, time, and then you can have storylines develop, and you can see characters kind of uh, grow naturally, and uh, these two these relationships develop between people, and that's some of the best parts of NXT was they do that so much better than WWE does with the men, with the women in general. So to have those people kind of overseeing that too, I think it would be great for women's wrestling. Um, but I don't think WWE would ever just put all of their women onto kind of their own show because it's just they they like having that kind of break up the bigger segments of of their of their big brand shows. So. Do you think that's a Triple H Vince thing? Do you think NXT is the way it is and is better because Triple H and in Raw specifically, I guess, is the way it is because of Vince? Is it that much of a separation? I I don't know uh, because you know everybody says that retires or whatever and Triple H takes that the WWE is going to get so much better. Uh, I don't believe that because the WWE brand is a battleship at this point and you don't turn a battleship on a dime. Nothing is, it's not going to change overnight. Like raw isn't going to become NXT overnight. Um, I think what holds back SmackDown and raw is so if if, look, look, if you look at like SmackDown and raw as kind of like big, like major 
uh, record labels, like like a Capitol Records or right. something. Uh, they need to be the most marketable. They need to be appeal to the masses, like the, the the broadest spectrum of people they can. So they don't do anything great, but they do everything okay enough that they kind of hit that wide audience. Whereas you know NXT is like an Interscope or like a smaller level um, kind of indie label or like a smaller label owned by a big promotion or by a big record company that they can kind of experiment on that and they can make it a little bit more specialized and target kind of specific areas. So you're, you're kind of getting the people who are a little bit more um, diehard and more interested in that traditional style of wrestling. Also, I think that NXT does better because it's an hour long show. Yeah. Uh, wrestling, totally. it's, wrestling is in its best form at an hour. Uh, for that, that weekly television, three hours is too much. Two hours is even kind of too much. If you can have an hour long show, I mean, think about the best uh, television shows, period. Game of Thrones, uh, Breaking Bad, Sopranos. Breaking Bad was not three hours long. No. <laughs> if Breaking Bad was three hours long every week, it would be filled with nonsense. So you you have to kind of uh. you know, edit down and make things tighter. And yeah, I know that, you get a lot of sponsors at three hours and that's why they do it. But if you want to make the best creative product, you have to kind of have some editing over yourself. And I think that that's one of the big things that NXT has the benefit of. So if Triple H takes over Raw, like it will probably get better over the long term. Over time. But it will still have those those things that it has to overcome. It'll still have that a massive amount of time it has to fill. It will still have the shareholders that they have to satisfy. So that's that's going to kind of be the issue with that. I, I like your mind. I like the way it thinks, and it led me right into these next questions. So we were talking about the women's wrestling. We're talking about uh, sponsors and Raw at this moment. Uh, we're, we are talking a book it game, the wrestling promoter card game. Uh, I just dropped their link in chat and all the Kickstarter, WrestleCon, Jazz. Um, but, okay, so WWE – and, and I feel bad that we're, we're talking a lot about WWE because there's so much more out there. And you talked about it earlier with the with the uh, indie promotion, truly independent wrestling, uh, sure. yeah, Ring of Honor, Progress, New yep. Japan. Um, but I, I, I'm just thinking, with the addition of Ronda Rousey, with the talk of Fox Sports gobbling up Raw and SmackDown, uh, could we see a change in what we had just talked, what you just mentioned, a change from three hours, maybe to two to start, maybe to one, um, and change the whole sponsors? Uh, wh- what would the the landscape look like for, or uh, according to you, in your opinion, mm-hmm. what would the landscape look like for WWE if Fox Sports gobbled it up? Honestly, I don't think that they would screw with the formula too much because I think that the reason they buy them is because they they see them as profitable in their right. current uh, their their current shape the, the way that they are uh, and they don't want to see WWE uh, have less airtime because if I remember correctly, Raw going to three hours was at the request of the USA Network because they get to sell more ads, they get to sell another hour of advertising. So I don't think that Fox Sports would would reduce the amount of time i don't know if they would how they would change it or or if there would be any sort of like you know real changes to the format of the show i think that they would just kind of take it as it was and just let them be the the money machine that they are so i i think that that's why fox would do it they're not doing it to reinvent the wheel they're doing it because what's there is working not from a creative standpoint, because we all agree that, you know, three hours of, of Raw, you know, your eyes were bleeding at the end of it. Uh, SmackDown has not been at its best lately. No. But it's it's making money in terms of advertising. It's making money in terms of merchandising. So I don't. I don't think these these are people who are considered about dollars and cents and they're not concerned about good yeah. wrestling. Yeah. So, uh, of course, there's the catch-22 of, well, if the wrestling was better, more people would be watching it. But you can't you, you can't really translate to, that to dollars and cents to these people. So I, I don't think it would it would change up much at all. Yeah, let's not let's not let's not kid anybody. WWE, uh, if, if the wrestling was better, if the storytelling was a lot better you'd get people like me, people like you, the diehard wrestling fans that turned away years ago, mm-hmm. back. Right. But I don't watch you, Raw and I don't watch SmackDown. 
it's you for would, that reason. You would lose. It caters to kids. It caters, not kids, but it caters to the P. It, it can touch everybody. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the thing, though. And that's the misconception is the idea that, oh, they have to appeal to the kids. Well, you mentioned it. You had Izzy on your show. Yeah, sure did. Where, where did Izzy get well known from? Uh, busted open radio. Well, that's okay. where I know her from. Before that, but sitting in the crowd at oh, NXT yeah, yeah. shows. Yep, yep, yep. She didn't. She wasn't at, at Raw. Nope. She was sitting at NXT nope. and got behind Bailey. And yep. everybody says like, "Oh, we go back to TV 14." NXT mm. is PG, and it's the it's one of the best. It, I mean, in in terms of just pure wrestling product and not spectacle, it it blows away ninety percent of the attitude on a week to week basis. Like it, it's such a good show, and it shows that you do not need to have, uh, you know, a, a provocative content or blood or violence to put on a good show. Like you can do it at that PG rating. Uh, it, it's just, and and I think that if WWE tried to just take a little bit of a chance and do something more towards that style. I don't really think they'd lose that many people. And I think that they would gain more than they lost for sure. But again, it's, it's the idea of you, you go with what's safe. You go with what, you know, you don't take a risk when WWE had the attitude era, they did the attitude era. They had to take a risk. They had to try. Something yes. Different. Yes, they did. They had, com- they had competition and we might like, see that soon with, with new Japan, uh, New Japan uh, on access. They're they're, right. they're going to have another American show uh, soon. Um, yeah. and, and I mean, it's just. And I, I think in terms of of content and whatnot, like New Japan is as far as getting eyes, you know, the American audience's eyes on a product that is not based in America. That's so hard to do. They're doing a great job of it. Um, but I think we're kind of the the idea that there's going to be like somebody who's going to knock WWE off the perch. It's gone. Um, the only the only people who are ever going to kill WWE is WWE themselves, and I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, but we're in a period now where it doesn't need to just be one or two or three promotions with with YouTube, with Twitch, with on demand streaming services. Right. You can have room for literally dozens of promotions, which is what we have now. We have you know New Japan, and like you mentioned, Progress earlier, and you know, great stuff coming out of the UK and and Mexico and Canada, and Impact Wrestling has, has moved their stuff up north. There are room for all of these things to coexist now, where there wasn't necessarily before, because there was only so many TV channels. There's there's not that problem anymore. So I don't think we're ever going to see whether it's New Japan or whoever knock WWE off the perch. They're they're Walmart. And nobody's gonna beat Walmart, but you can you can put up a lot of different shops around that will still do good business, and that's what companies are doing. And I, I genuinely do believe that this period in professional wrestling is the best period ever that there's ever been. Better than the Attitude Era, better than the old ECWs. I love that stuff. There is something for everybody now. You, if you like the sports entertainment stuff, there's WWE. If you like hard hitting stuff, there's New Japan. You can watch Kaiju Big Battle and watch dudes in rubber suits fight in a fake city scape. Like, <laughs> there's so many things out there that I, I've always, I've often told people who are kind of just getting into professional wrestling or not interested that like you tell me kind of what like things you're into in and I'll like, direct television you. and movie and I can find a professional wrestling yeah. match that you'll like because it's just. Pro wrestling is not in a piece of art. It is an art form. It's not a movie. It's cinema. It's not a comic book. It's literature. You know, it's it's a style to convey stories, and that's what makes it so amazing. And I, we live in a period where you have such great access to it, and you are able to just get whatever whatever floats your boat, and it's amazing. And I, I I'm so happy that it's gone this way. And that just goes goes to show that we, me and you, literally think of the same things. Because I, <laughs> my next question was, we are we living in the golden age yes. of wrestling? And we are. We are. genuinely, yeah, uh, absolutely, beyond question. I mean, you think about how many great pro- that aren't even employed by W. Yeah. On top of the fifty or so really great ones that WWE employs and it's, it's mind blowing. It's never been like this. And there's more people coming up all the time. It's just people it's, it's never stops. It's never ending. 
and you have so many different ways you can get it. It's it's absolutely fantastic. Best period of, for professional wrestling ever. Absolutely. I, I I try to tell my daughters that every day when I'm forcing them to watch the May Young Classic. Although they <laughs> they do really enjoy it, and I don't know if it, no, it can't really be seen. Well, you can't see it anyways, but it can't be seen anymore. In the in the video that all my uh, old school eighty wrestlers titans the big rubber ones are down there. The oh yeah, them. I yeah. had I had um I had Ricky Steamboat and Randy Savage. Yeah, I got them. I got them all. Sadly, <laughs> <laughs> um, wow, I feel like we could talk all night wrestling. We could. Um, we I think we could definitely. Um, but sticking to the putting you over uh, mantra of I won't. I won't keep you over an hour. That's one of my selling points. We are at the hour mark. Um, but this is this is the time of the show. Um, I'm going to leave up to you. Uh, I'm going to let you cut your own promo, which you should be good at because <laughs> uh, with your indie background, I'm going to let you – it's your time now. You can say whatever you want. You can, you can put yourself over. You can bury me. You can put uh, – book it over um, in any way. You want at all um but first before i give you that mic um i i just want to thank you uh because you didn't know me from from anything and uh you agreed to do it you agreed to do the show and uh i appreciate that and um all right so the floor is yours dear friend okay well first of all you know thank you so much for having me on because again uh you didn't have to give me time on your show and and what to uh to tell people what i'm about so thank you so much for that uh again if you're out there if you're interested if you're somebody who uh, obviously if you're a fan of pro wrestling if you are a fan of board gaming um book it is really for you uh i have worked really hard on making a game that pro wrestling fans are gonna like that board game fans are gonna like and uh, the kickstarter again this uh starts this coming friday april 6th if you are going to be in the new orleans area for wrestlecon or wrestlemania or both um we will have a booth there so come on by see us if you uh back the game on kickstarter and come to our booth at wrestlecon we actually have exclusive promo cards that are not going to be available to anybody else that we are going to be giving out so i hope to see you there and just check the game out again our twitter handle is at book it game uh if you have tabletop simulator you can search for book it on that um, we are going to also uh, have a print and play version. So if you want to just kind of see the components of the game, or if you want to uh, print them out and just kind of play the game yourself, just to see how it runs, we're going to be doing that. Uh, the game is uh, again, probably going to be uh, in the, depending on how much you want to spend and what version you want to get, get 34 and $44, uh, which is pretty reasonable for a board game that you can play over and over again, one to four players. Uh, it is, um, it's going to be, you know, it's a game that's a, a strategic game that's going to take about 60 minutes to play. You know, it's got a lot of meat to it. And uh, it's something that has come from somebody who uh, loves professional wrestling more than uh, any other uh, form of form of art at all and there's a lot of really fun inside jokes and all the uh, wrestlers in there the 60 wrestlers are all inspired by people in the real world the artist Alex Mahoney did an amazing job um, we're really I'm really really proud of the way the game came out and I really hope you all check it out and uh, and pick up a copy because I think you're gonna enjoy it you can play it with your friends you can play it by yourself and uh, you know always, if you're interested in, in hitting us up, you can send us a message on Twitter. We have our own Discord channel. Uh, we can give you the information for that if anybody is interested in joining that. And uh, we're going to be running that Kickstarter through the beginning of May. So uh, you're going to have some time, but the sooner the better. And uh, I uh, I hope everybody enjoys. And I I can't wait to come back on the show. I'd love to come back and uh, and have a return, to, return bout here. Uh Phenomenal, phenomenal final <laughs> promo. Uh, it made me realize how unprofessional I am. I did want to get the Discord link um, for you uh, for that plug, uh, but you guys can find them. Uh, just contact them on on Twitter. Uh, Book a game. Uh, yeah, just, I'll send the link over to you, and you can post it in the chat. Yeah, there you go. And and mm -hmm. I, I'm definitely I'm going to plug you uh, throughout all of my streams, whether they're wrestling or not, because uh, I do appreciate and love everybody. Um, did I have anything? I did I have anything else to say after that? amazing promo uh 
No. Um, but yeah, no, I'll definitely have you back on. We're going to have the Smack Talk guys back on. Uh, oh, it'll be fun. I, yeah, I, I checked out that interview. Like a joint thing with them. Their, it, their, their, their game is really cool too, for it, sure. It is. Um, I, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm going to cut you loose. Thank you very much. Uh, have Thank yourself you a wonderful uh, WrestleCon. Have yourself oh. a phenomenal WrestleMania. It's going to be seven hours long. Are you going? I know, I'm not. I'm not going. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to Super. I'm going to the Impact versus Lucha Underground show. Probably going to go a couple shows in between. I I my plane back to New York leaves at like ten the next morning. Um, I didn't want to stand out. Uh, in 80 degree weather for seven hours right. to probably just watch a giant screen because that's all I would have been able to afford for the and tickets. See, so. And see, that's the thing. It's like, we didn't even touch about uh, upon that. WrestleMania weekend has turned into like the big shows for everyone else as well too. Yes. Um, yeah. That's, that's what WrestleCon is. And, and that's, the- you can fly into where WrestleMania does in amazing wrestling shows. Never go to WrestleMania yeah, if yeah. you don't want to. Exactly. And, and all of them are pretty affordable. You know, tickets are like thirty bucks at most shows. Like it's it's if you're a wrestling fan and you can get there, like definitely do it because there's going to be something for you, even if you don't want to bother with the pomp and circumstance of mania. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be uh, <laughs> double double timing it back from Pax East Sunday night. I leave Sunday. Uh, I'm driving obviously, uh, and I will be double backing it. In, in streaming Sunday night uh, cool. with uh, what, whatever, a wrestling mainstream. Anyways, uh, thank you very much. Book it, thank wrestling uh, ga- uh, card game. I'm going to cut you loose. And uh, we'll be in touch, man. Uh, Take care, for man. Sure. Thanks, yeah. guys. Peace. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is oh, Brian Zane from Wrestling With Regret. Go. And the standing we're, we're streamer, right, he's put me over. So now I'm putting him over work. with yeah, putting you over. All right. Another one in the books. That won't... That went well. That went that went okay. I I blame Ed. I blame Ed in chat for spoiling uh how many people are here or not here. I've I've eliminated that from my viewing aspect. Uh because I'm not consistent enough. Anyways, uh big shout out to all the people at Book It Book It Game. Uh which you can find um Book It Game at Book It Game. Whoops, wrong button. At Book It Game on Twitter and Tabletop and all that fun jazz. Big shout out uh, to the Papa Jinx family, the cooks, um, for watching me wherever they are. Well, all the people. That's right. We're all in. We're all in. Um, But this show, and I'll cut it. I'll, I'll cook, cut it and, and whatnot, and we'll make it nice and in. And pretty, and we'll put it up on YouTube. Uh, we'll replay it here as well on VODs. Um, I'll also, I think I'll, I'll, uh, I'll grace the Mixer crowd with it because uh, I can't live stream over there at the same time. So I'll grace them with it. So um, people will see it. And uh, I have a big mouth as well. So I'll definitely let the book at people. And something I didn't talk about tonight, and I wanted to, but I didn't because I felt I was, I was cutting away a lot. To talk about uh, uh, myself, whatever. But um, I like the fact that it's on tabletop gaming and that I could actually stream it easily as a streamer and a wrestling fan. This game is good because I could actually stream it with three of my other friends if they have tabletop simulator, um, which I contacted the people from tabletop simulator and try to get some codes to give out tonight. But of course they don't like me. So uh, I didn't get any, but anyways, um, it is a good streamable game as well as a regular board game with your family, which, um, I also didn't touch on, um, having a regular PG 13 or PG version of the game is good for families, for for families. Anyways, um, I appreciate everybody coming in tonight. Um, uh, and I may be back on the stream soon, but I am going to cut this aspect of everything, cut it so we have it, and it, it won't take long to edit. I uh, really want to thank uh, Ed in the chat tonight, um, John for being amazing at the game. Uh, I, you know, I never caught the actual name. I have his name somewhere, but I can't remember it. But the book it, all the people at Book It Game, 
uh, Alex out there in Australia with the artwork. Um, I expect a standing streamer card uh, <laughs> in the game. And uh, oh, yeah, there's the link right there. Uh, okay, so if I copy it. I'll just keep that link. Make sure that link never expires and I can just spread it out. I'll give you a command for it too. Um, anyways, um, thank you very much. I'm KDog3 and 4. Oh, we need a we need an outro song. I'm KDog3 and 4. Uh, this has been putting you over and I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Everybody. And I would do anything for heat Rub a jobber's face into the mat I would do anything for heat I'd tell a little girl she's fat And I'll never refrain from making fun sports team so mean and I would do anything Big Papa for Pump. heat oh I would do anything for heat I would do anything for heat but I won't do that no I won't do